Hello everyone, this is Experiment Designs in Computer Science, Week 8, Paper Review, Part 0, Comments. In this first video, I will talk about uh, the comments and the objectives for this lecture. So this lecture, as I said last week, we will not introduce any new concepts. Instead, we will improve our understanding of what a good experiment design is by studying recent papers. We will present, uh, the TA will present two papers that we think have good practices in terms of experiment designs. You are welcome to read these papers later and look at the comments that TA make to see what kind of good example it, uh, when writing papers. In the next two videos, uh, they will talk, he will talk about what parts of these papers are good and why they are good. Okay. Also, I have added, uh, as you requested, I added three good examples of reports from 2019 and 2020 in Manaba. So these three reports got the maximum score in the experiment design. They have different styles, but some points in common. And I hope you can understand, study these different reports to base this on your own report. Now, let's go to the comments about last week questions. Okay. All right, so the first question I asked was about time travel. If you could do time travel and travel to anywhere in the world, where would you go? And I got so many interesting answers. It was very nice to see how all of you thought about these questions. So I'll go for some of them. So the most people said that they want to go back to the past and change something or relieve it. And of course, this is very easy to understand. I, I, I can understand these inputs. One person said that they want to go back to the year 2000 and throw people in the internet using knowledge about the future. And I thought it was a very creative answer. I really liked this one. And then another person said that they want to go to the future and ask advice from the future self, which is also a very unique answer. Two people said that they want to go home because they have been far away from home because of COVID. And I can understand that. That would be, yeah, that's very important if you are feeling um, alone, baby. I hope that you can go back home soon and talk to your family. One person said this was the most one in the future. They wanted to go to Bangladesh and see how Bangladesh was 500 years in the future. And I think this is a very interesting answer, like seeing how the human, the earth will be in the future and how, what's the different kinds. <clears throat> now, um, one person wants to go to Paris in 2015 before the Notre Dame Tower burned. One person wanted to observe the Aurora. One person would want to go to ancient home. Other to ancient Saudi Arabia in the type of the Hijra. One person wanted to visit the dinosaurs, which I can completely understand. This would probably be very close to my own answer. And another one wanted to go to a historic show, maybe Wimbledon. Uh, that was the, the Live Aid show. That was a very historical one. A lot of people wanted to go to the present time to places that they want to visit. So we had two for Iceland, two for Antarctic, and I found that interesting. One for Andalusia, one for the Arctic, one Bahamas, one for Europe, for Andalusia, Europe, and Hokkaido, Maldives Islands, Napoli, Singapore, Switzerland, it's repeated. I repeated this, sorry. Toyama, um, Abandoned Island, Universal Studios, and Yuna. All right, going to the statistical questions. So the first question about the class was, describe two situations where choosing a sample size of 30 is not appropriate. And there are many different reasons, okay? Some of the reasons is that if they observe the cost of the experiment is too expensive, then you don't want to do as many. Uh, uh, as many. Other is that the experiment takes too much time or the experiment has negative effects. And one more general answer is because if you don't calculate the number of observations, maybe 30 is not enough for the power or the confidence that you desire. So a lot of people answered correctly. Some of people gave some very, very specific answers which is kind of correct, but I was thinking more about general uh, sort of answers here, so I put it in mostly correct. Um, one person, the, a few people got this incorrect. Uh, those that got incorrect, they usually said, thing, oh, when, the, when the deviation is too large or 
something like when the median is not the same, which kind of no sense answers. So these are generally the categories that we think about when we don't when we don't want a specific number. Um, <clears throat> One student actually calculated the specific numbers that are necessary for this. This is not, not exactly what I had in thought in mind when I created a question, but that's maybe a very good answer. Okay, the second question I asked is the R command to calculate the sample size for the main Whitney U test. And a lot of students got correct, a few got incorrect. There are many comments. Uh, the most common answers were using the package wmpow or the function any Wilcox ord, but there are other answers. And if you answer the function for R that calculates this, then that's correct. Now, one kind of incorrect answer that happened many times was a lot of people said the Wilcox test function. The Wilcox test function will calculate the test, but it will not calculate the sample size. So please make sure that you know the difference between calculating the sample size and calculating the test. These are two different things, okay? So make sure you know the difference between these. And I hope that you saw from this exercise that it's not very hard to find the calculation for a different, a certain kind of test by looking on the internet. So if you want to do a different test, it should be easy for you to um, find the calculation on the internet. Now, I want to reply to some of your comments. There are many comments that I want to talk about and many good comments. So please keep bringing on the comments. The first one is, although this is not the point of the lecture this week, how can we avoid getting used to the experiments when they iterate them? And this is very important. This is a very important question. This is about when you do an experiment with questions or and the person can, re if the same person repeats the experiment many times, they will get used and the experiment will change. So that's why we don't want to do the experiments on ourselves. We have to think about uh, that kind of things when we do the experiment design. The idea would generally be that you make, take many different people that will do the experiment for the first time. Also, um, in uh, um, psychological research, there is this concept of priming that is very important when you ask people to do experiments for you. And if you're interested in this sort of questions, you might want to study a little bit about priming. <clears throat> Then another student asks, I don't have a nice idea about report 2. Is any topic for report 2 okay? And can I change the topic? Yes, any, any report topic is okay. Uh, if you have any questions about the report topic, please come to the office hours and we can talk about it. I think that's a good opportunity for us to talk about the report topic. Another student asks, in slide number 11, you mentioned if you want to increase the power of the experiment, we could increase the size of the minimal difference. However, I feel this is not natural because I think that the greater the power, the smaller the difference. And this is a very good question because in fact, you are correct. Your comment of not feeling natural was correct. Maybe the way that I describe this is not the best way to describe. So let me try to describe different a little bit here. So what I wanted to say of course, you are right. If the experiment is powerful, if the experiment has high power, it will detect a very small difference. So what I want to say is that when you calculate the power and you see that this power is too low, you wanted to know what is the difference that you can detect. Because let's say if you calculate the power to be 30% and the difference to be 5%, in fact, you can't really detect a difference of 5 because you only have a 30% of chance. So what is the size of the difference that you can detect with a good probability? So that's what I, want, I wanted to say. You wanted to know that. So you increase the difference to know what is the size of the difference that you can calculate with a good probability. And that is why I, what I mean. So you, okay, maybe you think that a good probability is 80%. So you want to know what is the difference that gives me 8% of probability of detection. But of course, your experiment is not very powerful in that case. Okay, another student asked, on slide number 22 and slide number 24, the non-centrality parameter is given, but I was unable to see any use of the value since the calculation is done by A, alpha, sigma, delta, B, and tau. And that's true. 
that's you are absolutely correct the no centrality parameter can be derivated from sigma and tau and that's why i really did not talk too much about the no centrality parameter another student asked is it acceptable if i perform a retrospective experiment about the moba game data statistics and analysis to answer some questions related to this game and yes that's totally acceptable that's a good idea for an experiment however especially for retrospective experiments it's very important that you calculate the power and the sample size of our experiment to know what sorts of differences you can really obtain in and how many data you really need to calculate your statistics now another student asked how can i learn r is there any websites or books for it around me python is the most popular programming language yes python is very nice i like python and i think that programming languages are like tools the more you know the better to learn r I have some initial materials. If you go to Manaba and resources and course information and recommended reading, in that page, you're going to find some materials to start to study R. Okay. Now, another student asks, is the class on June 11 online? I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. Every class is online. In general, I will provide the material and video beforehand. And I will always be available on lecture time for questions. So you can always come to lecture time for questions if you have questions. And I will put the materials online beforehand. Another student asks, if we choose a sample size with desired confidence and power, does it not mean that we are manipulating the experiment? And that's a very good question. And the answer is no, because you calculate the sample size before you execute the experiment. So you calculate the sample size that says 10, and then you will obtain 10 observations. And that's okay. It would be manipulating the experiment if you do the experiment, let's say you collect 20, and then you calculate the sample size, and the sample size says 10, and from those 20, you select the 10 that you like more. That would be manipulating the experiment. Uh, what type of question will be in the final exam? MCQ, true, false, written short question or broad question. Do we need to perform any part of the experiment using programming language? So the final exam will be very similar to the questions that I ask in the short surveys. Okay, so the idea is like define this or in what situation would this be right or in what situation would this be wrong? Uh, what is the test that we use in this situation? So this is the kind of question that I will ask. Of course, in the short uh, in the short test, I ask all the questions as text. Maybe in the exam, I might include some uh, true false questions or like choose all the options that are true. So it will be a little bit of a mix, like short text answers and short like true false answers it will not be necessary to program anything in the exam. So imagine that the exam will be in the style of the short uh, surveys, the, sh the, the surveys. Of course, the contents might be a little bit different. I might cover other parts. And of course, I will not ask in the exam about things that I did not teach in the classes or I did not ask in the surveys, okay? Okay. Um, Many people asked if can we change the date of the video presentation? And that's a very good question. So I thought about this a lot. Okay. Um, so why the video presentation? In the beginning, the idea is that you would present the lack the your you would present your work in the in the class. And if we had too many students, we would make groups. So maybe we would have group work. But because of Corona, it does not make sense to do group work. And because of the number of students, it would be very little time for each student to present their, 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 their lecture. So I thought about the videos. I was talking to the TA and to some of the students, and I understand that you have like many video presentations to make, and that's a lot of work. So I decided to make the video presentation optional 
not graded. And I, I decided I'm thinking of the solution that I'm considering. I'm thinking of making the video submission optional. You don't need to submit the video, but if you submit the video, I will give you comments about your video, like what are the good strong points, what are the weak points. So let me know what you think. I will put this question on the survey this week and I really appreciate your answer and I will make the, the, the final decision next class. But unless someone has a very good uh, objection, I will probably make the video uh, optional and the submission of the video to be together with the final uh, report. So let me know your opinions. Finally, I'm very confused with deltas. In lecture three, we learned D as a difference between true and calculated mean. That was the effective difference. Is that effective difference is the same as this lecture? Almost. It's almost the same idea, but not exactly. The difference in lecture three, the delta was the real difference. The real difference that we don't know. We don't know the real difference but we can use it for our calculations to calculate the uh, hypothesis, okay? The small delta in the last lecture is the desired difference. Is the difference that is our target, the difference that we want to observe in the experiment. So the amount of difference that we think is important. In terms of calculation, they are similar. It's just like the thinking that is different. I hope that helps you understand a little bit better the difference. Almost the same, but it's the, the, the theoretical concept is a little bit different. All right, um, these were all the comments for this lecture. Uh, thank you all for the questions. And in the next video, the TA will explain some examples of papers and I hope you enjoy you. Bye-bye.